Many of you might love the look of a V neckline like this one on a neat garment. Unfortunately, not every pattern has that option. You will find an abundance of high necklines, crew necklines, scoop necklines, not many V necklines, but you can do it yourself. You can create your own neckband and modify your own favorite garments to fit this beautiful neckline. And here is how. Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is the maximum expression of limitless sewing because today I have some ideas that can take your sewing to another level. Limitless as I say, because you might have favorite patterns that fit you really well. You love these neat tops or dresses. They just have round necklines, high necklines, crew necklines, scoop necklines, boat necklines, all those necklines but they might not have a V-neckline option. And V-necklines and V-neckbands are something that is not commonly found. It's not that you can choose a hundred patterns that have this option, you know, they are far in between. And maybe you want to have this look on a garment that originally doesn't have it. Maybe you have a pattern that you've made already, it's your tried and true, your favorite, you've got the fit down and you'd like to have more options. So this is what this video is about. It's about how you can modify your patterns to have a v-neckline and how you can create your own v-neckband. Now I'm going to have two things available for you here. One is a full tutorial that explains how these neckband pieces came to be. Very easy, very easy. You can do it yourself with a piece of paper in a couple of minutes and you can draw your own neckbands. And also you can access the same neckbands with the same measurements I mentioned here as PDF downloadables from my website. So you can download them for free and print them over and over again. And they do get pretty battered up from use, I know, from using mine. I keep folding them and they'll get pretty beaten up <laughs> from the use. If you want to have access to these free downloadable templates for the neckbands, you can look at the link below that will take you to my website where you can subscribe and as soon as you get the email, you can download these free printables. I don't have the expertise to be able to digitize a pattern like this and I cracked my head trying to figure it out, but I realized I just can't do that. I don't have the software or the know-how. So I have outsourced this to a friend that doesn't know how to do this. Her name is Michelle and she's on Instagram as Win Michelle. So she has kindly done these for me. Um, it is a paid service. So I'm very happy to know that she can do this for me. I can pay to have these pieces made digital so that you can download them. So expect to see more free templates that you can download from my website when I do hacks and things, things that you can add to things. So I'm very excited about this possibility because I've wanted to do it for a long time. But let's hop back to the V-necklines. I'm showing you how to make V-necklines in two widths one that is five eighths of an inch finished with. So when you just look at the neckband already sewn onto the garment from where the seam line is until the edge, there's one that is five eighths and one that is slightly wider and at three quarters of an inch. So five eighths is one and a half centimeters for my metric friends and three quarters of an inch is two centimeters in metric. So you have two options there, but you might wanna have a band that's a little bit narrow or a little bit wider, depends and Patterns that are drafted for knits usually use a quarter of an inch seam allowance or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I have made neck bands that will work for all these seam allowances. So you have four pieces there that you can choose to play with, but let's hop in to see how these are easily done. Just a few lines, a few rectangles, a few little snips and you're done. Let's see. What I've done here is just stuck two papers together. I've got the sticky tape on the back. Uh, so it doesn't disturb where I have to do my lines. They're just two A4 papers. It doesn't really matter. You can use letter, whatever paper, just stick two of them. The total length of these bands don't really matter because you will be adjusting that length according to your project. What's important is to get the width correct for all these pieces. So I have drawn four bands here. There's one there, one there, one there, and one there. They all have different widths and I'll explain. Basically, I'm giving you an option to have a band that has a finished width when it's already sewn onto the garment of 5 eighths of an inch and another one that is a little bit wider at 3 quarters of an inch. Not much difference, but you might prefer a narrower band or a slightly wider one. That's, that's why I'm doing two types. And also, for the 5 eighths of an inch bands, I have an option with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. 
these are the most common seam allowances you will find in your patterns so that's why I wanted to make some that were going to work for whatever pattern you were working with so that you wouldn't have to think that much more. I'm going to cut these all out and have four little rectangles separately so you can see them better. All together it just looks like a bunch of lines. Here I have two neckband pieces. They will both have a finished width of 5 eighths of an inch when sewn onto the garment. Good to know that that is a finished width when you're trying to visualize how much the band will add to the height of that V that you've got on your garment. Sometimes you try on your garment without putting the band on and you might think whoa it's really low but then you need to consider that there's going to be an amount added on top of that with the width of that band if you see between these red lines there and between these green lines there it will be 5 eighths of an inch times 2 there when you fold this in half discounting the 3 8 seam allowance you have there the finished width will be 5 eighths there so if you're using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, like the band on the top, your rectangle from one edge to the other here will need to be one and three quarter inch. That in metric would be 4.4 centimeters and you will have the seam allowance drawn there already. That's included in this total measurement. A quarter of an inch there, a quarter of an inch there or six millimeters and six millimeters in metric. I'll put all these numbers on the screen. That is for a band that will have a finished width of 5 eighths using a quarter of an inch seam allowance to sew it onto your neckline. Now if you want that same 5 eighths seam allowance but you prefer to use a 3 eighths seam allowance, you can see that seam allowance there in green. This has to be a little bit taller, it needs to be 2 inches tall or 5 centimeters. I'll also put that on the screen. If you want you can take a screenshot. <laughs> These will be the bands that have a finished width of 5 eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters. Now how do we mark the little V here on the ends? We need to mark that on one of the ends. The other end will be the one that's cut on the fold. And I'm not giving you a total length here because that will vary with your project. So I think if you stick two papers together and use the total width, you will have a band that's long enough for most of your projects. Otherwise you can just add on a little bit longer. And this would always be half of the measurement of the neckline, half of the V. When you're measuring your garment, you would also be measuring half of the neckline so you can calculate how big to make this. What I have here is the corner of a cutting mat. You will see that this is the 45 degree angle mark right there. That is the little mark that we want to use. So what I'm going to do with one of these bands, and you will do the same for all of them, is just fold it in half lengthwise. After folding your neckband in half like that, it doesn't matter what type of band you're making, it's always the same, just fold it. Place the folded edge against the cutting mat and the ones that are folded together align that to that 45 degree angle mark right there, right on that square, right on that corner there. Hold it with your fingers, place the ruler right on top following that line of 45 degrees. That starts right at that corner there and then you make a line, you cut and voila, you have the piece. That will form that V there in the center and the other side will be the side that's cut on the fold. What happens if you don't have a cutting mat? You can make yourself your own little template. So all I have here is a basic paper. To get a 45 degree angle all you need to do is fold it onto itself of one of these corners meeting both these edges and then when you open it up you will have that 45 degree angle crease and then you can mark the line there and then you can use this to cut your band if you don't have a cutting mat or somewhere that doesn't say that it's a 45 degree angle so you take your band this is the one that uses the smaller seam allowance here you put the folded edge towards the bottom meet that line right there on the corner hold it down make sure it's all very neat and draw your line cut it away and you can achieve the same thing without having to use a cutting mat you can just create your own little template that has the 45 degree angle there these are the two bands that we have created and we have cut these. One is slightly narrower than the other just because one uses a quarter of an inch seam allowance, the other one uses 3 eighths. But when you actually put this together and sew it on the garment, they will both have the same finished width. And what I'm going to do now is draw the seam allowance here on this little V section, the same quarter of an inch. Here we have two neckband templates, they will both have 5 eighths finished width 
and one will be useful for a 3 8 seam allowance, the other one for a quarter. I'll put these aside. I have two more neckband pieces that you can create if you want to have neckbands that are slightly wider and have a finished width of three quarters of an inch instead. Three quarters of an inch in metric is two centimeters. So you have one here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and you have one here with 3 8 seam allowance. Just the same. You see the lines are drawn there that mark the seam allowances. That for this one needs to be two inches or five centimeters. And this one that's slightly wider here is going to be two and a quarter inches or 5.6 centimeters. That is the only difference. Otherwise, you will create this little V there the same way that we created the Vs over here. Same process. And you will end up having four neckband templates for you to use and play with depending on the garment that you're using, depending on the pattern you're adding a neckband to, whether you want a narrow band or you want one that's a bit wider or you want to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance or three eighths seam allowance. You can see that you can make these yourself very easily. You just need two pieces of paper stuck together, draw some rectangles. If you don't want to download the pieces I'm giving you for free, you could take screenshots here and just jot the measurements down and draw them yourself. You see that you don't even need a cutting mat to be able to do that 45 degree angle accurately. And I have my hand-drawn pieces that I've shown you in the tutorial here. I know exactly what they're for, the finished width. They have the seam allowances mark there, so I can keep using these. And I don't have a determined length. This length can vary. This is the side that will go on the fold and you would fold this away according to how you measure your neckline on your garment. But how do you do that? I have two examples to show you. The first example I'm going to show you is how to do that on a typical pattern that has a front, a back and a shoulder seam. Let's see how it's done. What I have here are some pattern pieces. They look very strange. It's because there's a princess seam side back and side front missing from here. But this is the neckline there and that is the shoulder seam. This particular pattern uses 3 8 seam allowance, so I have folded away the 3 8 from the shoulder seams right there and just stuck them together to pretend that's how it's going to be when it's sewn. This is how I can accurately measure the neckline, the half of it. We are only going to be working with half of the measurements of the neckline. It's just easier to translate that onto the neckband that will be cut on the fold, so you don't need to be multiplying by two to then divide by two, things like that. So we're just measuring half. This back would be on the fold and this front would be on the fold. Now here we have a deep scoop neckline. I have made this pattern once before and the original scoop neckline is fine. It's not too low, it's just perfect. So it's not that I want to change that. What I do want to change is that I want to make it a V. Right at the bottom of this scoop neckline, I drew a little square one inch. I drew that to make sure that what I'm going to draw as a V will make sense. I'm going to drop the V by an inch so the height of this will be almost the same as the original. It won't be lower but in order to have a V I will need to drop that a little bit. So I also need to fill in a little bit here with extra paper just to get the right shape. So I've already got some tape there. So I'll just put some paper here. Now what I want to do is, when I'm doing the V, I want to cross this corner with that corner there. It doesn't have to be straight and actually it looks better if it's a little bit of a curve. This is the edge of the original neckline here. I'll just draw it in red so you can see. Okay, that makes sense to me. Here you can see the shoulder seam. I'm starting here, maybe if you divided this neckline depth into three, I'm starting at the first third. This is all by eyeballing, you know, you have to determine your own curve. So I'm just going to go through there. You see how I have extra fabric here? It's not going to be so round, it's going to be closer to the center. And that will go through that square, the corner of that square and the point here. And it's slightly curved, it's not totally straight. So you can see that in order to get a nice V, that came in about a quarter of an inch right there. And the original height is just lowered by an inch. But remember, you're going to be putting a neckband on, so it'll be slightly lower than the original, but it won't be totally, totally low either. This pattern uses 3 8 seam allowance, so I'm actually going to draw that here so that it's easier to measure. Would not find my measuring tape that has metric and imperial on the other side so I'll be measuring in metric 
but I'll tell you what it is in inches. From the center back, we will measure at that seam allowance mark. So it's three eighths away from the edge all the way down to the tip. So I get in metric 38 centimeters, that is 15 inches. I want my band to be 85% of the length, so I'll multiply point. 85 and my neckband piece needs to measure 12 and 3 quarter inches. Remember we made two neckbands that are to be used with patterns that have 3 8 seam allowance. This one has a finished width of 5 8 of an inch or 1 and a half centimeters and this has a finished width of 3 quarter inch or 2 centimeters. So slightly narrower, slightly wider. I'm going to use the narrow one just because I feel like it. It is the one with 3 8 seam allowance. And remember, we wanted the band to be 12 and 3 quarter length. Remember, we had marked the seam allowances on the neck bands. So we have this little place right there. That is where you need to measure from. That dot is where you're going to snip into later when you sew these two together. But that dot from here all the way down to the end is where you need to measure. And my band needs to measure, that's 12 and 3 quarters. That in metric is 32.4. So this is my place right there. Remember we had just made a random length. This is a pretty deep V. So the length of uniting two papers is going to work for a lot of neckbands, for a lot of patterns. So that is the length that I need. I'll just fold the rest away. And for this particular pattern, this is how I'm going to cut my neckband on the fold. And it's going to fit my neckline really well. And that's how it's done. It's very easy when you have a regular pattern that just has a shoulder seam. Because that's all you need to put together to measure half of the neckline here. The back and the front. And then you have half of the neckband. So we're only measuring half of the neckline and half of the neckband. This will be cut on the fold, of course. This too will be cut on the fold. And that's how you can attach a neckband that's going to fit. I'm not mentioning the patterns there because I will show these soon on the channel. So you will see them made up with the necklines really soon. <laughs> when you just have a shoulder seam, it's quite easy to put the pattern pieces together and measure that half of the neckline. The example I've shown you there has a 3 8 seam allowance that I drew in to make it easier to measure at that exact line. If your pattern had a quarter of an inch, then you can do that. Just remember, you're not measuring from the edge of the paper. You're measuring from inside at the seam line, whether that be a quarter of an inch, three eighths, a half inch, whatever your pattern might be. So just remember that so you can get accurate measurements. This video can complement with my masterclass on neckbands because I talk a lot about the type of fabric and the percentage that you want this neckband to be smaller. So if it's a very lightweight, very stretchy fabric, I would usually make the neckband smaller even up to 75 to 80 percent typically it's 80 to 85 depending on what you think will work better with your fabric and then when we're talking about heavier more structured fabric you won't want to make the neckband too small and i'll usually stay with 90 percent so you can totally play with the number that you multiply your half of the neckline measurement with you know 80 85 and that when you do it directly on the calculator just means 0 0.8 0 0.85 0 0.9 it's very easy so i hope that helps what happens if you have already made the garment it's got a round neckline and you think hmm, wouldn't this be nice if it had a v you can try on your ready-made garment that has a round neckline look in the mirror see how deep you want to make it make a mark and then cut out your V on the ready-made garment before putting on a neckband. You can do that totally. And then you will just extend your piece, choose your neckband according to the seam allowance you want to use, a quarter or three eighths, and measure away from the edge of the fabric and get your measurement and do the exact same thing you would have done to pattern pieces, only you're doing this on a ready-made garment. If you're not confident in just knowing how much to drop this V or do that um, just on the paper, you might want to do it on your body because then you can certainly know how low you want that V to be and then consider that the band will add a little bit of height there, either 5 eighths or 3 fourths if you're using my neckband pieces. So all these options you can consider and they all work. When I made this Nioka top from Sinclair, that is the option I took. I made my top. This has a V neckline in the original pattern, but it's finished with a binding. I didn't think that binding would be appropriate for this rib knit. I just didn't think it was going to work well. I think it would stretch out and not look very neat. That's why I decided a neckband was a better option for this fabric. I tried on my top just with the edges raw 
and figure out, yep, it's got a nice depth. If I add on a neck band, it'll add a little bit of height. But I thought it was okay. I sewed it on and I like it. I wouldn't want it any lower than this. I wouldn't want it any higher. So sometimes it is a good option to try on the raw edges, see, and maybe cut it out afterwards and just, just wait and see. You can choose, experiment, have fun with it. I'm quite comfortable to do both methods. Just do it on the paper straight away or do it on the made garment. It's the same thing for me. Now, what about raglan sleeves? With a raglan sleeve, you don't have the one shoulder seam. You have a seam here and then another one there that composes the raglan sleeve. So you need to unite more pieces together in order to be able to measure that neckline. So let's see how that's done. Okay, here we have another pattern and this is different because it's got a raglan sleeve. So to measure the neckline here, you have to unite more pieces than when it's just a regular shoulder seam. This is the front neckline here. This is the raglan sleeve and this is the back neckline. Now the back has a center back seam. There is some shaping on this pattern. So I have folded that seam allowance away. This particular pattern uses a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I have drawn that in red right there. To unite the back to the raglan sleeves, I've done the same as I would if there was just one shoulder seam there. And I have folded away the quarter of an inch seam allowance there and taped that together. Same as there. That's how you can replicate how this will be when it's sewn. Now this is the front over here. I think this neckline being round is too high for what I like. I prefer it a bit lower. So from the original I have dropped it two inches. We have one inch there and another there. On the inch that goes at the bottom I drew my little square just to help me get that nice 45 degree angle right there approximately. Again, I'll take a, a ruler that makes sense, can be different for you. I'll have my ruler go through both of those points, that one there and that one there. I want to conserve the original, so here I'm at the original neckline edge, and then I'll go like that. And that will be my V neckline. So I'll draw the seam allowance here again. So again, I'm going to measure how long this neckline is. Remember, this is folded away. This seam allowance folded away. So I'll measure from the edge there and to the edge there at the seam allowance mark, not from the edge of the paper. This pattern uses a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so that's why I've drawn it like this. And this measures 36 centimeters. That in inches is 14.2 inches. <laughs> That is what this measures. So let's round that up 14.2 inches and I want it up 85%. You can do 80 if the fabric is very stretchy or if it's more structured and a little bit bulkier, you could do 90. It's up to you. But half of my neckline needs to measure 12 point something. Let's just say it's 12 inches. It's 30 centimeters and a half. So I picked one of my neckband pieces that is made with a quarter of an inch seam allowance included. I need to measure the 12 inches up to that point right there. So this is 12 inches or 30 and a half centimeters. I'll make my mark right here and this is going to be where I'm going to fold my pattern piece away so that this length is appropriate for this dress. And this is the neckband I'm going to cut on the fold. You can also do the same thing, make your piece, try it on. See what you prefer and cut out your V after the fact, after you've sewn your garment with like a crew neck line or whatever. It's up to you. I have done that the same. Just always, always be wary that the neckband would add height. Either or will work. You see what you're more comfortable with. But I hope all these options are helpful for you. You can see how to transform a neckline on a typical garment with a shoulder seam, with a raglan sleeve. You can see how to lower this and transform it into a nice V. Remember, you're not doing a straight line. It is slightly curved, as you can see. And these neckband pieces will fit onto any of these modifications you can make to your favorite tops and dresses. I really hope you have fun with this. It gives you so much freedom. And this is what I mean about limitless sewing. There's no limits, you know, you have patterns that you already love and you can transform them into something extra, something nice like this with a V neck band. And to see a neck band tutorial, how to sew it, this is already in this mini series. That's why it's not in this video. Check out the whole mini series because it includes wovens and knits. I really, really wanted to make this video for you and I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoy making your own neck bands or using the free principles that I've provided for you and experimenting and having more clothes with these beautiful necklines. I will see you again very soon. Bye.